Good morning, Light Lions. I hope all of you had had a wonderful week and you guys are staying safe. Um, I know we haven't seen each other in quite some time, but do hang in there and we'll get through this, alright? So, I'm going to get today started. Let's go ahead, close our eyes, bow our heads, and put our hands together. And I'll pray, dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for just bringing us together and giving us the opportunity to just learn from you, Lord. I ask that you continue to be with us and just give us the wisdom and knowledge that we need to do your will and just be better Christians, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. Well, let's get today started so you guys can enjoy the rest of your weekend and, you know, enjoy tomorrow since most of you are probably in school now okay so here we go Jonah I hope some of you remember him if not we're gonna learn about him okay so Jonah he was one of the prophets of God here he is and you know one day Jonah was praying right you know with his siblings with his father with his family and you know God kind of spoke to him because that's what prophets do they speak to God and God tells them to do certain things so that they can act on his behalf so he was praying and God was like all right I need you to go somewhere all right now where would God send you know a prophet well this is where he sent him. So you see at the bottom left, it says city of Nineveh. All right. So a little bit history of Nineveh. Nineveh is a very wealthy town or city. And, you know, God was not very happy with them. Why do you think God was not happy with them? Yeah, they weren't worshiping God like they're supposed to. Okay. And so God basically told Jonah, hey, I want you to go to this city and you tell them if they don't start praying to me and start making offerings to me, I'm going to destroy their city. Now, do you think Jonah was very happy about the fact that God was about to save Nineveh, a city that doesn't even believe in God? No, right? Because he's a prophet of God and he's going to think like god what are you thinking if they're not going to listen to you you think they're going to start praying just because i tell them oh god's going to destroy your city no right and jonah also he hated nineveh because he knew the types of people that they were there and he just believed that that city just needed to disappear anyways so you know jonah thinks of a plan and this is like a little joke basically Jonah's like, you know what, I'm going to trick God into thinking that I'm going to Nineveh, but really I'm just going to go on a vacation, right? So Jonah, he goes out, gets on a boat, right? And he's like, I want you to take me as far away from Nineveh as possible, okay? Now, do you think God, when he sees Jonah trying to go in the opposite direction of Nineveh, do you think he's very happy with him? No, no. Like, would you be happy with him? No, right? So, what do you think God does? <laughs> yep, that's right. God causes a huge storm, okay? And basically, as this storm is rolling and tossing this ship around, everybody's like, what is going on? What is wrong? And basically, Jonah states... Or tells them, like, hey, my name is Jonah, I'm a prophet of God, but I'm supposed to go this direction, but I'm going in the opposite direction. So, what do you think all the ship people do? That's right, they pick up Jonah, and they toss him into the ocean. And guess what's waiting for him in the ocean? That's right, a big fish. Now, this fish is so big that it swallows boats, it swallows people, it swallows animals all kinds of things right now while Jonah was in this fish right in the belly of the fish that we say do you think Jonah just sat there doing nothing waiting to get digested by the fish no 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 he starts praying right while he's in there he's like 
God, what do you want me to do? What have I done? You know, he, he constantly goes off on like how he did Jesus or he did God wrong, right? He was supposed to do something, but he chose to disobey. So he basically said to God, like, God, if you give me one more chance, okay, just give me one more chance, I'll do what I'm supposed to do. Right? So this is him, you know, he's in the belly of this big fish and he's just praying to God, like, God, let me go, let me live, you know, I'll do whatever it is you want me to do. And so eventually, after three days, the fish just, you know, throws him up onto the shore, right? And just like Jonah promised, he went straight to Nineveh, okay? Now, Nineveh, you know, you think of it as like a very sinful city, but they knew who Jonah was. So when Jonah came and told all the important people like, hey, this is what God said, this is what happened to me, and this is what's going to happen to your city, if you don't start worshiping God like you're supposed to. And, you know, all of the people in Nineveh, they you would think that they wouldn't listen, right? But they were actually listening to him. Even though he looked like he was a bum, right? Because, remember, he was in the belly of a fish for three days, right? So he looks kind of crazy. But despite looking crazy, everybody listened. So Jonah, after he delivered the news, right, and he told everybody, he went up on this hill outside the city of Nineveh. Why do you mean he went up on that hill? Yeah, he wanted to see the same thing that happened to um, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? He wanted God to rain fire, just level the whole city, basically make it look like it never existed, right? Or like what happened to the dinosaurs, they got wiped out by a meteorite. He wanted Nineveh to get wiped out by a meteorite. But that didn't happen, you know? Jonah sat there for days upon days And he was just waiting, 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 like, God, just rain fire, God, rain fire. And it was at the point that, you know, while Jonah was waiting, it was very hot. And Jonah was still like, God, you need to destroy the city. But what God did instead was he created a tree while Jonah was sitting there. Made it so that tree grew and it provided nice shade for Jonah while he sat there. But after a while, God realized, and Jonah realized, that God never planned to destroy the city. And Jonah was not happy about that. He was still very bitter because he's like, God, you need to destroy the city. They don't deserve to live. So, God, knowing that Jonah was still sitting there waiting for the city to be destroyed, and not loving the people of Nineveh for turning their ways... He sent a giant worm that basically ate the tree and ate all of his shade, right? And Jonah sat there for a couple more days cooking under the sun until he just realized that the city of Nineveh was safe because they chose to worship God. Okay. So, you know, he kept praying and was like, God, can you please, like, you know, destroy the city? But he said no. Now, what's so important about this story? Well, there's a couple of things. One is that, you know, when you're called to do something, you have to obey God's will. And Jonah, when he was like, oh, I don't want to go to Nineveh. The people there are terrible. That place needs to disappear off the map. Do you think that that was very Christian? No, right? Because God says you have to love your neighbors, right? And your enemies. So, when he was wishing for them to die, is that loving, you know, people? No, right? So, and then the second thing is, Jonah decided not to obey God, right? What did he do when he got to the ship? That's right, he tried to take a boat in the opposite direction, get away from Nineveh, to make sure that Nineveh will get destroyed. But that didn't work, right? Because he ended up in the ocean and in the belly of another fish. 
And finally, the big thing is that God is very, very forgiving and fair. Because if he wanted to, he could have just destroyed Nineveh and basically just, you know, dusted off his hands and walked away. But he didn't. He wanted his creation, his, you know, children to have the opportunity to repent, right? So what did he do? He found a prophet, sent that man, you know, hundreds of miles away. And he had that man speak to the people of Nineveh. And the people of Nineveh listened. They knew. They were like, oh my gosh, this man is the real deal. If we don't do this, God is going to make it so that there's nothing but ash here. So they obeyed God's will. And guess what they earned? They earned his forgiveness, right? So we have to know that, you know, when God calls us, it's because he wants us to do something. But at the same time, you know, he doesn't need us. But he will punish us if we're called and we don't answer that calling. Okay. And finally, of course, is the fact that God loves all of his children equally. Right. He wanted to give Jonah a chance to repent. And he did. He forgave him. He gave Nineveh, a whole city full of thousands of people, a chance to repent. And guess what? That's exactly what they did. All of Nineveh repented and they returned to God. And so he saved their lives just because they, you know, repented and said, God, we're sorry we did wrong. So, you know, Jonah's journey, um, it's not a very long one. Even in the Bible, it's a very short chapter. But... It's very important because we learn the aspects of being a Christian just from Jonah, right? And it's also very important because now we see that people given a mission, you know, they have to complete the mission that is given to them by God. And that God just truly loves all of us, okay? So that's it for today. Thank you guys for listening. Um, So I'm going to close this out in prayer. So let's go ahead, close our eyes, bow our heads, put our hands together, and I'll pray. Dear Lord, thank you for everything. Thank you for just giving us the opportunity to be reminded of Jonah and just be reminded of how merciful you are and how you call us, um, not because you absolutely need us, but because you want us to grow and learn too, Lord. So I ask that you be with the children Give them the wisdom, knowledge that they need to do well in school and give them the heart and the courage to uh, just take this opportunity, even though nothing is really open and there's a lot of restrictions, to take this opportunity to grow more in love with you, learn more about you and, you know, just really spend time with our families, Lord. Thank you for all that you do, all that you have done. And we ask, Lord, that you just continue your protection over us and our families. Guide us and give us strength, Lord, and make it so that, you know, we can get through all these things, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, great job today, guys. And I hope you have a wonderful week, okay? Bye.